it is the last topic um, for the non-parametrical analysis. So now today, um, let me summarize it. Um, we have uh, um, two parts. Um, before, um, we got the parametrical. The parametric approach. And now we, we are discussing the non-parametric. So um, when we have a one sample, one population, then we applied uh, one sample t-test. So parametrically, uh, we assume the normal distribution or the large sample. But um, when we don't have the normal distribution and even we have a small sample, then uh, we have to apply the Wilcoxons. Um, the signed rank test. So the second one was the two sample t test. Uh, we compared to the pooled t test. You know, is actually the pooled t test is not the only one. But we, we got an example for the pooled, I mean the pooled t-test for the two sample. And we discussed the man and Whitney. The man and Whitney test. Uh, when we have uh, two samples, non-parametrically. And um, this one is not a new one, but uh, when we have a paired sample, then we apply the paired t-test but it's actually it was is almost the same as the uh, one sample t-test right so it's the same thing non-parametrically uh, we apply the paired signed rank so even though we have uh, two groups but uh, we took the um, difference. Then simply we apply the um, t-test, one sample t-test, or the Wilcoxon's the signed rank test on the difference. Today, what do you expect today? The today's one is the uh, we can compare to ANOVA. In this course, the very beginning of the semester, uh, we discussed ANOVA. So now we have uh, um, the many groups. We have uh, many groups. It's a mu1 equal to mu2 is equal to, it's a mu k. Yeah, so we compare to ANOVA. And today we discuss the Kruskal Wallis test. So now today, yeah, we compare the many groups non-parametrically but it is almost the same assumptions you know is most is all parametrical approach the parametrical analysis we assume the normal population or the large sample but non-parametrically when we don't have a normal distribution or even when we have a small sample then we cannot apply the parametrical approach then now we can apply the non-parametrically so today uh, we are going to discuss the Kruskal Wallis so in this example 16.8 uh, we have uh, um, three groups the cars buses and trucks then we compare the three um, the three uh, three means and the alternative hypothesis is exactly same as the alternative one in ANOVA so it's actually um, the statements are um, it's a step number one the state the hypothesis and null one and alternative one and now we need the um, test the statistic in the second step is absolutely again um, we assign the rank okay 
Um, here is uh, the um, stem and leaf for each group, but um, let me assign the, uh, the rank is on the raw data in the table 16.12. So uh, when you look at the um, so what is a number of miles is a drove driven so always we assign the rank number one for the least one so now the 1.1 is a list so it is a rank number one and the rank number two is 1.8 um, and the next one is the 2.2 so exactly same way we merge them together we assign the rank so um, let me let me give you the ranks it's a 16 14.5 and 3 5 the rank 5 and 23 9 11 um, 6 and 10 and the buses is a second rank and 7.5 and 7.5 because the 7.2 is a ties. It's a rank 7.5 and 7.5. And 4, 12, um, 21. And 20 is a 24, 17, 19, 18, uh, 14.5, and 25, and 13, and 22. So we assigned, we assigned the ranks from number one to number 25 because it's a totally, uh, we have uh, 25, the number of miles for each group. Then now uh, we take the rank sum. It's actually we need the rank sum. So we have to take the sum up in each group. So we need the rank sums. So for the cars, the rank sum from 16 to 1, that will be 98 is a 0.5. And the buses from 2nd to 21st, that is a 54. And from 20 to 20 seconds, that is a 172 is a 0.5. So simply I can say the trucks is a, has the most, the sum of the ranks because they got the most, the mileages. Yeah. So when you, when you look at the mileages is itself, then the trucks has the most mileages. So even the rank sum is the most. And now when you take the sum up, when you take the rank sums, I mean the rank sum of the sums, it must be 25, it must be same as 25 times 26 over 2. That will be 300, it's a 25. You can check by yourself. Yeah, always, yeah, we can apply the n times n plus 1 is over 2. So that will be the summation from rank number 1 is up to the last one, 25, it's always. <laughs> And the sample size, and the sample size each, is so we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the buses six, and the trucks is a nine. So when I add up, yeah, that will be twenty-five. The twenty-five sample. So it's almost the same thing. It's almost the same thing. We assign the ranks. It's from rank number one to rank number twenty-five. And is again, yeah, we take the rank sum from each group. And additionally, yeah, we have to know how many sample size. Then now, let me take the test statistic. Um, yeah, here's a summary. Here's a summary for the Crisco Wallis test. Um, it's basically, uh, we don't have that we don't have the normal assumptions and large sample, right? And now here is the test statistic. Okay, so let me copy. Let me copy the test statistic here, the K. Um, it it is the twelve over n 
n plus 1 times the sigma of the all j score over nj separately is minus 3 times is n plus 1. Um, if we want to know how 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 we could get this formula yeah please look at the textbook the textbook um, suggests us kindly yeah how can we get the get the formula then now the n is the total number of sample size is a 25 so let me plug here's a 25 and the second one will be one more 26 and now it is the summation you know, actually, the all j that is the rank sum, rank sum from each group. So now I can plug um, 98.5 square over 10 from the bus. The rank sum was a 54 square over 6, and the trucks, the truck head. Um, 172.5 square out of is 9 trucks. Separately, subtraction 3 times um, 25 plus 1. So by the formula, uh, it has actually the two terms. Yeah, we take two terms separately and take the subtraction. So from the first one, uh, from the first one, you, you will get 87.9226 minus the second one will be 78. So the finally, the test statistic will be 9.923. That is the test statistic K. So now we stated uh, um, step number one, the hypothesis. And now step two, we take the test statistic. And now we need the uh, critical value or the p-value. But now the critical values suggest to us the test statistic k has a chi-square distribution. So we knew the chi-square distribution. Yeah, we, we use the chi-square when we apply the chi-square test. And now the test statistic was it's a 9.923. And now we knew how can we get the p-value um, using the calculator TI-84 or even from Excel, uh, we can take the right tail probability. The right tail probability will be the p-value. But for the chi-square, we need the degree of freedom. You know, actually the degree of freedom is a k minus one. What was the k? The k was the number of the groups. So now we have a three groups, minus one will be two. So from the chi-square distribution with the degree of freedom is a two, is a, um, the lower is a 9.923, and upper is, will be infinite, the positive infinite is a 9,999. Then you plug the degree of freedom equal to, then the upper tail probability will be 0 0.007. And now we can make the decision. It's actually, it is, it's less than alpha, 5%. So we can reject reject the null hypothesis. Then what will be the conclusion? The conclusion will be they are different. Who are different? The mileages. The mileages um, is among the three groups. Um, the cars, bus, trucks is, are different. Okay, um, I can I can see the sum of the trucks, the rank sum of the trucks is the most. So um, simply I can say the mileage from the trucks is the most, and the mileage from the bus is the least, right? Yeah. So anyway, uh, we reject it, and we can make the conclusion they are different. So please um, look at the test statistic. And please understand how can we get the p-value from the chi-square distribution.